shit. All right, we are recording. Okay, good, good. good. There we go. Well, you, I'm like really loud in my headphones. I'm just listening to you through there. So, <laughs> how you guys I'm doing, just... man? I I just turned down the volume on my end, so hopefully you guys can hear clearly. All of us is everybody good? Can you hear me and Joe? <laughs> yeah, we're gonna we're gonna talk about our uh, podcast. I'm just kidding. Dude, I feel like I'm on with Howard Stern right now. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I Bro, know. every Dude. time, every time I think about Howard Stern, I always just go back to that time that he brought Carmen Electra into his studio and they had that like fake masturbation horse. Oh, like the Sibian or some shit? Yeah, it was like, I don't, wow, you know the name of it? What? Dude, are you kidding? I My, uh, my dad raised me on Howard Stern <laughs> dude, for 10 years. <laughs> I'd be in the car, I'd be like, what the hell is happening? He'd be like, one day you'll understand. Bro, yeah. I, I hardly ever watched Howard Stern. The only time I ever watch Howard Stern is when he brings like a really cool artist on. And, so, and I, I get just, the chance to watch it, so... The shit that I have seen on Howard Stern, man, I mean, you can't make this shit up, dude. Like, it's so gross. I can't even discuss it on this forum. <laughs> but, like, it's just fun. And I know Bao's an OG, man. I know Bao used to watch Howard Stern a lot or listen. I mean, but um, we were talking about that one time. I know Bao has listened. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm like, you sick fuck, Bao. We all learned it from Howard Stern. <laughs> Dude, on the way, I, oh my God, on the way, dude, when my, <laughs> so yeah, man, when my dad would go to work, man, he would have it on and we would just jam out to Howard Stern for my, like a decade. My mom would never let me listen to that stuff. You know, we grew up in the Bible Belt, so oh well, grew up right in the Bible Belt. Shit, I didn't even know what satellite radio was until I was like fucking 17 or something like that. Oh, dude, like I that. grew up in LA, man. My parents oh, ruined yeah. me by like five years old, man. Yeah, it was like moment, the moment you were born, they were like, here. The world is fucked up, and we're going to show you how fucked up it is. <laughs> and then 2020 came in. Existence. Yeah, mine was like, stand at this altar, sit in the pew. Holy shit. Joe gets baptized like every three years still. <laughs> Bro, it was raised by a <clears throat> military mom, single military mom, just her, and in the Bible Belt. So, yeah. Yep. Put That's two and two together. You can see how that childhood went. A lot of you know, discipline. Man, it, 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 you know what? You know what? It's so funny that you bring that up, Joe, because we can correlate this to trading, man. So one of the craziest things about how, <laughs> oh my God. Oh, one Jesus. Of the first, what is that? One of the first books I voluntarily read and was Howard Stern autobiography. One of the first books. No way, man. That's Private actually party. him? That's him, dude. That's him. That's a young Howard right there. Oh, okay. I can see how he got a radio show then. Never before has a man done so much with so little. That's great. Oh my god, man! I watched. Private I watched him on comedians coming, and cars getting coming for reading. spring. What's coming that? for spring. What kind of title is that? Coming for spring. More like coming for your girlfriend. <laughs> Dude, he was like the, he was like the lady stealer, man. Like, do not introduce your wife to our son. Do not introduce your girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> now, when I look at him, he just looks like some fucking like he he just looks like a bird. This looks like he looks like Big Bird. He looks like Big Bird. Like a dyed version of Big Bird. If Big Bird was a person. Exactly. <laughs> if Big Bird was Ozzy Osbourne's drummer, that would be had Howard Stern. <laughs> That's funny. So man. Tosh, why did you move from LA to Arizona? Well, you know what, man? So that's in, an actual honesty, question, by the way. So I moved in, I moved in with my girl and we wanted to give it a shot and she needed to get out of the city. And I kind of was like, you know what? I'm down for an adventure. I've never left LA. I'll, I'll give it a year. I'm you probably got family on in my way too, back. Right? Dude, I'm probably on my way back as soon as Corona ends, honestly, but I just kind of <laughs> want to change the pace, man. And dude, the, you can get so much for your money out here. So what I wanted to Real. do is simultaneously just have a little bit of an adventure because I got some family out here, but I wanted to see what properties were for sale. Because dude, yeah. remember we mentioned in a different, you know, a, a, a different webinar is- bro, You almost you did a podcast. <laughs> yeah, I, I almost did. You cannot get anything even livable, dude, in LA where I like, you know, like Toluca Lake, Burbank, you know, um, mm -hmm. like um, the, the upper side of West Hollywood where it's Sunset Boulevard, you know, not like West Hollywood, but just above it. Because man, West Hollywood's a little rough for me. But yeah, I know the exact layout of LA at all times. 
you know, all the neighborhoods, I'm extremely on the up and up on that. I know where all those are. Yeah, man. So it's just, it's no just cool, man, to see are. it. Now I want to go to like England or something, but <laughs> Bro, <laughs> I was like, I forgot what this webinar dude, was. <laughs> Welcome to our uh, real estate yeah, webinar. What is this webinar about again? Any advices on how to trade after 2 p.m.? Sometimes my job doesn't allow me to trade in the morning and I don't want to chase. I finish work at 10 market time. Dude, you got you got reversal time, baby. Eugene, you gotta you gotta get right over to you reversal time, man. Shorts at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time when stocks are still up near resistances or they are starting to break down, you know, under VWAP, man. That is pretty much the go time for shorts. You got about an hour, maybe an hour and 15 minutes. And then 3 p.m., brother, is great for long. So, dude, when people come to me and they're like, hey, Tosh, can I have a trading career if I can't trade in the morning? Hell fucking yeah, you can, dude. Yes, yeah, and absolutely. Don't, don't limit yourself to small caps either. A lot of people think that small caps are the only trading vehicle out there in order to grow an account. Um, it, there's, there's no reason to just limit yourself to small caps and make that your only means of trading. Like, oh my God, I can't, I can't trade uh, <clears throat> for the first hour of the day. I can't do it. So I can't be a trader. False. There are literally, yeah, 1,000, yeah, you said it, but false. Who says that? What was it? What's that from where he's just like, false? I, I don't know, but fake news. Ah, <laughs> fuck. Dude. Oh, The Office. Yes, Dwight. Yes, yes, there we go. I can't believe I forgot that. False. false. Bears eat beats. Uh, dude, Bears I'm telling you, Faye's, Faye's beats. coming for you, Joe. That'll She's start shooting shot, bro. She's coming for you. <laughs> dude, so anyway back to this is if you can't trade, if you finish work at 2, 10 a.m. market time, you know, 1030, we have a lot of courses on this, Eugene. Eugene, 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 Eugene. I'm not sure. I don't know. Uh, or maybe it's Eugene with like a long E. Eugene. Uh, Eugene. Eugene. Yeah. There, there's one from, uh, from Aloha. Thank you, Flash. And then I did one for large caps that's called 1030 trading. Yes. Um, and so there, there's a lot of content in the library to be able to, that you don't have to focus on uh, necessarily trading small caps at the open. You know, small, there, there's, small caps there's so and many shorting. advantages. Guys, small caps and shorting. I, I know a lot of you have like, um, the notion that you think, oh, I'm not a short seller, so I can't join, you know, MIC. That's not what this is, man. We cover long, short, and options, you know, long, short of small caps, big caps, and we do options. Like, we are not, you know, a one-trick pony at MIC, man. I can't make that clear enough. Yep. Oh, what's that one thing? Clear? Is that diving? Ooh, nice. Some volume came out of that candle. When you zoom out, though, it doesn't look like there's any volume. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Seriously. <laughs> you're like, damn, look at that volume. And then when you zoom out, you're like, okay. You're well. like, nah, it was day two and <laughs> it had the volume. Was... <laughs> yeah, you know, I don't really. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Oliver, Oliver, don't get Alex started. Yeah, we even have Alex Forex signals. No, dude, we will never have Forex signals. We don't have Forex signals. We don't Good do that. God. What is a faster way for growing a small account, going long or short? Many ways uh, to answer this, but Joe, you go first. Depends on the market you trade. In small caps, the fastest way you're going to grow is trading with the flow of the river, for lack of a better... I mean, like to me, a long trader in small caps is, is a salmon swimming upstream. You are fighting the current. Um, it's so difficult to become a successful long trader without ha having any experience on the short side in small caps because the edge the edge is proven that it's to the short side in small caps like so we all know how these end right and if you don't know where shorts are trapped or how a short thinks there's no way you're going to be wow clir holy yeah fuck. that's nasty wow just wait for there's, those candles man <clears throat> there's no physical way you're going to be uh, that successful as a long trader. I'm sorry, but almost every single really good long trader in here had either prior market experience. Okay. Um, <clears throat> uh, Tay has been trading the market for years. 
She is a swing long trader. Uh, she's been trading the market for, for a long time and coming into small caps, it was just another adjustment to her strategy. Uh, and then Harry was originally a short seller from Twitter. So he was a sniper trader on Twitter, sniper trader 21 or whatever the fuck it is. Oh, I thought it was um, Canadian boy. Yeah. A little Canadian boy that, little, that little uh, Canadian boy with the slippers and the socks. <laughs> Dude, <laughs> that that slippers joking, and we socks, bro. With the fucking sweatpants. <laughs> we love you. I Harry. just can't. I was like, that's some shit that Tosh would wear right there. That's some shit in LA and that then I he would, would wear. He, then he would put a button down on it. And he'd put, be it like, what put a button down and a backwards hat, baby. <laughs> what up, fam? <laughs> put a Rolex so, on there too, just to make it all kinds of crazy. Right. So um, now if the fastest way to grow a small account in, in large caps or the overall market is naturally probably going to be to the long side because the markets are designed to go up. So good companies are designed to go up as the markets are designed to go up and a, ra and a rising tide lifts all boats because three out of four stocks fall on the market. I mean, that, right. that statistic has been around long before, you know, like day trader gurus on Twitter that t are telling you that that's the Bible. No, that's been around forever. And so it, the fastest way to grow a small account is, is, rowing with the actual flow of the river. Yes. It, if you're going against the grain in small caps with a small account, trying to go, grow it as a long trader, you're going to have a lot of failures before successes. Quickest way to dwindle your account is be a <coughs> contrarian. Oh, for real. Quickest way. Yeah, 1,000%. And in big caps or large caps to mid caps or even trading options on those, uh, on those stocks, the quickest way to drain it is trying to short all of them, thinking that because it's up, it needs to come back down. Nah, these companies are real. They don't need to fucking come back to where they came from. So they don't need to go back. So yeah, quickest way... To grow it is going with the grain, yeah, not you know being a contrarian. From, from like, an educational like standpoint, the quickest way to grow your account is watch this three times. Right. Over. <laughs> and in that course, this is that's something we talk about. That's going to be the fastest way to grow your account. It's not memorizing patterns, okay? There's actually a video that I'm about to put out for lifetime members, and it's going to be an update to that course just as a like a study uh, kind of guide, not really a guide, but like a study update. Okay. It's kind of be basically the focus is that a lot of people are trying to memorize the patterns in this course. And that is not the focus of the course folks. That is not the focus of the course. It's not your normal fucking day trader guru course. This yeah, is an actual yeah, dude, form seriously. of education that teaches you a process of research, a process of analysis. It teaches you a process that allows you to trade literally any setup out there. You're just trading the chart, okay? It allows you to trade the chart, find the trend, find the key entry zones and exit zones, find all that stuff, understand the edges in each of these scenarios. And then once you understand the process, then you understand the patterns that you start to see outside the process. You perform the process and then all of a sudden you go, oh, I know that pattern. Oh, Joe, I remember let me say, that. Joe, let me, then, say it like this. let me say it like this. This course is not how to buy breakouts part five and six. This is how to learn part how to six trade. Million. Dude, this is how to trade yeah, in, in how to fucking trade encompassing form. Has nothing to do with, with like, posting a chart pattern on your wall and memorizing it. That is exactly. going to do Thank nothing you. Yes. for you. Nothing yeah. for you. You're going to waste your time. Big waste of time if that is your goal in this Well, course. and here's why. Here's why, guys. You're going to, because all those, those Furu DVDs are such horse shit and they teach you one setup or one thing that if the market condition looks like this every day where everything just fades, if this were all the plays and nothing ran, how the hell are longs going to be able to capitalize in that um, oh, for every real? single day with one stupid strategy? No, we're going to teach you how to do trading line to line that both sides can maximize on this because we're teaching you trading, not one indicator, not one pattern. And we don't need to figure out that when we see that, you know, for example, like the most common pattern for day ones is like a gap and crap. 
you know, that's what everybody likes to say about um, like day one plays, you know, in small caps, it's a gap and crap. Oh, it's a gap and crap. Oh no, it's not a gap and crap. This looks more like it could be a runner. Who gives a shit what you think the pattern could be before it has ever happened? Yeah, and we're not here to piss anyone off, but it's we don't care what you think. We care yeah. what's in the chart. Nobody cares about the emotions. Work harder. Yeah. Like, it's in the chart, bro. The chart yep. doesn't give a fuck about you. It, 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 you got to learn the symmetry of the chart. You got to learn the overall language. You got to understand who's in trouble. Dude, the reason why we focus on, okay, so like one of our major things in the morning, and this is, you know, how Alex was able to capitalize on UONE today, is he took advantage of a descending chart, a sloping chart, a chart with people who are stuck. This is psychology. If you are along and you wake up and you're already down from buying 40, 35, 30 in the mid 20s to down in your position, what do you think is going to happen in the open, man? This stock goes green or whatever and then slams right back red immediately. What do you think is going to happen? This thing's just going to squeeze to 50? No, dude. The yep. chances of that happening are not. So yep. he's using the psychology to go, dude, this is one of the best. I'm going to size in the opportunity is here. We are teaching you from a fundamental level, not, oh, Bollinger Bands and RSI tell me to blah, blah, blah. And then right. you have no idea how much size to use because you don't know if it's a good setup. Yep. The process teaches you how to trade the setup. The pattern te teaches you how far you should place your targets. That's basically how I usually reference it is if I know this setup goes X number of percentages or it usually does this or it usually does that, that means I'm not going to take, you know, on something like UNE, I'm not going to jump out when I'm up 20 cents. I'm like, no, I know when this pattern works, it goes like this. But if I don't know how to trade, if I don't know how to enter the pattern, it don't fucking matter where you think it's going to go, folks. Yeah, it really. don't fucking matter. And if you don't, don't know how to stop group. out. Yeah. If you don't have a process for taking a loss and you're just holding and hoping, because this is one thing that all educators in stocks agree on. Hope is not a strategy and never will be a strategy. If there's anything that all of us can agree on between every single educator online in the markets at any given time is that hope is not a strategy. Hope is not a strategy, man. Hope is not a strategy. The only thing I would ever give you on hope on the, on the, um, on the debate of hope is what is it? LMFA today. I'll show you an example. So like the only thing I'll give you for hope is if you waited for a top to form, which is one of the major strategies that we do at MIC and then we short the bounce. So say you got in an average right here. I'm just going to show this because I use this every now and then say you did get in right here but you were willing to risk a new high of day breakout. I would have gotten in at 488, just to be clear. <laughs> so say you, say you <laughs> got in right here, you got in a starter or whatever, and you had a stop right here to get out short, and you walked away to go to work because you're willing to risk, you know, whatever this is, you know, 60 cents to make, if possible, if that's the one that you hope does really tank, and you come back and maybe you do hit fantasy covers all the way down here. That's the only time I will ever give you hope. Yep. And that's not hope. That's actually a strategy. And you go, look, I'm actually willing to lose this or get a much bigger R&R for my trade while I go to work or whatever it is, if you do go to a normal job. But if and you're that's holding knowing and the pattern. You don't, yeah, if you're holding and hoping because you don't know what can happen, you're, yep. you're ruined. You're fucking but ruined. knowing the pattern will never tell you how to enter. Knowing exactly. the pattern will never tell you how to place your stop. Knowing the pattern will never, nothing. The pattern does nothing but give you an expectation on what you could expect to make that's exactly, it exactly exactly i have no expectations on where it could go but if it's this pattern and you know it to be true like uone you need to have an expectation on uone like when this pattern happens and you're and it's in this price range and you're covering for 20 cents you're fucking piking it this is an account growing pattern right here but how you trade it how you enter that's part of the process that we teach. You don't need to know that this pattern goes this far. You don't need to know that. range, man. Look at that. 
dude for real even like, alex was saying he was like did alex didn't he say he piked it alex did a great job but he was like damn i even i piked this shit <laughs> but again i think but again, I, I think honestly alex started doing the math in his head because <laughs> i don't think alex piked it just in my opinion he had covers all, all the way down so to either. like 18 right he, but he was crying a little bit when it hit the 15 sure. like, <laughs> yeah he cries when it goes to 15 who the fuck who doesn't cry when it does goes to 15 but i was laughing i was you know, i was like alex dude i think you nailed it pretty good man the point is guys if you're covering for 20 cents you don't know the potential of what this whole setup or stock or psychology yep. around this can bring you if you're educated that's the whole point and that's the whole point of the course is that you don't need to know. Yeah. I left a hundred grand on the table. You <laughs> don't need all? to know the pattern to know how to trade. You need to know how to trade first, then start memorizing these patterns and where they can go. Yeah. The best part is, is all these furus will tell you opposite psychology of what you need to know Buy yeah. stocks just cause they're on sale. And then they'll teach you a bullshit pattern that isn't even, doesn't even work and it's outdated. And guess what? It probably cost you $7,500 for a one year membership. And zombies too. Bao and Alex did not, they discovered the zombie pattern, right? They yep. discovered the zombie pattern, but they knew how today? to trade before they recognized the pattern. They knew how to trade before they recognized the pattern. So right here, Carve. Carve did like a little bit of a zombie. We had pumpers all over this today. Oh my God, yeah. Carve. What is happening with this YouTube stream shit? How is the SEC not all over this freaking fraud? <laughs> how is this not like Portnoy? And I'm going to name drop Portnoy because he doesn't run a service. Portnoy said one fucking thing about an OTC that pumped it, and all of a sudden the <laughs> SEC is all over him. All over him. This dude. fucking fraud that sells courses I have pumps no this idea. to his members, and it's up 500, 600%, 700%. I don't know. How is that not investigated? Dude. That right there is, I, I just. I, I have I can't, no idea, dude. I this just guy is red. The rationalize is green. It. I don't know, bro. Like Portnoy has one slip up, one slip up, <laughs> fucking one slip up. Yeah, how much does a whistleblower make? Yeah, I, I mean, I just, I, I mean, if there's, can I get a percentage of what he or she is going to be forced to pay to the SEC? That is so I mean, Val, <laughs> whistleblower. <laughs> What's the yearly salary? Two to five percent of whatever the criminal makes. <laughs> yeah, and Portnoy's made a hundred times more money than than said pumper. I mean, it's yeah, it, that's fucking one thousand percent true. Bro, I'm Portnoy's just, a fucking animal. He is insane. He is he is like the just, troll of trolls. Like he's he trolling is, Warren yes. Buffett, dude. Yep. But he's he's just a normal person that's like, holy fuck, what just happened? He doesn't he probably truly doesn't even fucking know what he was doing. Oh dude, let me stay let me be as honest as I can. I fucking love Portnoy. I'm rooting for him to go to I, dude, I'm rooting for him to make a hundred mil this year. Bro, for real. I love Portnoy, I dude. He's so entertaining. But I'm just like, how can people that knowingly pump their positions hide behind like one thing? I, I'm just Oh, fucking um, yeah moving on are <laughs> you a fan portnoy, of breakouts <laughs> are you yeah shout out portnoy are you a fan of breakouts like idex today or just wait for the extension and short the backside i didn't wait even know for the IDX. extension and short the backside brother uh, this is idex full, which oh is it a certain ticker yeah idex oh, idex okay Oops. Are we, are we a fan of the breakout or uh, so what breakout? Depends, depends who you talk to. I'm not a fan of the breakout. I will wait for backside on this. I am not a long bias trader, but the ones that are, again, what did Joe Kelly say? The biggest account builder was earlier, guys, is being the fish that rides the wave. This is pure momentum front side. Yep. Pure. And if you can figure out how to find this type of stuff in small caps and take the, take advantage of it, more power to you. If buying breakouts allows you to do that and you find a way that these work out, okay, cool. But buying breakouts is is an age-old strategy that 
uh, it's just it's so they're so easy to fail. Go to the well, daily and, chart. And buying right? breakout. About, and the, the, the this problem, guy might be talking about a daily breakout. Well, the par- the problem with buying a breakout, man, is twofold. You are running the massive risk of not only a massive stuff because it's usually it's at high a day. You are running the risk of not knowing if a pumper's involved. So if it does stuff, it's going to unwind all his room and it's going to be inorganic. You are just running so – it's chasing, dude. It's chasing at its finest. So when you, when you say buying the breakouts, man, that is about as like PTSD as I get in trading. I just go, oh, my <laughs> God, the days of me buying breakouts. Jesus Christ. Like, bro, no. A sustainable strategy is getting these things on a major dip pullback and following trend upward. Or, dude, like, again – or following trend to the back. You wait for these things to really crack VWAP. I mean, seriously, think about this. If you waited all day for this to squeeze out all impatient shorts and caught, even if it was just a little bit, once it broke under VWAP and then offered a little bit of a pop, maybe you didn't get more than a starter on, but look how much, like, this is all backside, man. That's the point. That's the point, dude. That's the fucking point. Yeah, if you buy that, like you're buying the break of pre-market highs. You know, like yeah. you don't, <clears throat> when it works, it works, but when it doesn't, it really fucking doesn't. Dude, it really doesn't. And there's truly, there's no edge behind buying a pre-market breakout unless said pumper is pumping to a bunch of sheep to push the breakout higher. Exactly, man. So that's about you, the only time it fucking works. How many times do you buy this breakout right here? Because AK, you chased. This is not a dip or a pullback, and it stuffs through FIWAP, and you're dead, and you're exiting at two forty in a market order. Yeah, I just. It, how many times does that happen? Honestly. Oh, dude, countless, fucking countless. Oh, what's running? Uh, UNOE breaking up? No, it's going red. UONEK gapped up a lot. Oh, I didn't have this on my radar today. It's like a derivative of UONE. Yeah. And so all the little fucking Robin Hood chasers are buying UONE K because they it's can like afford a it. Almost. Yeah. It's, well, I mean, it's literally a derivative of UONE. It's, it's just, I don't know what. Um, Huge disconnect, though, bro. Is. Huge disconnect between the original, though, I thought. <laughs> well, that's, well, think about it. Think about it. Robin Hooders can't afford a $20 stock. Yeah. They can afford a $6 stock. Makes sense. A $4 stock, a $7 stock, they can afford it. So why not buy UONEK and not even pay attention to what UONE is doing and just buy it like a dipshit? <laughs> <laughs> so Fucking that's sounds how Joe great. explains being a dipshit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sounds awesome. Let me do it. Man, I am so dumb. Dude, Bow, how did we miss this, bro? I didn't even have this on my radar. I had 10,000 other stocks on my radar. <laughs> Dude, that, look at that fucking morning death candle, bro. That's beautiful. You hit the pop right there. You hit the bounce in a VWAP. Man, how did I miss this? <laughs> he goes, I was drunk and home over. What's your excuse? <laughs> oh, shit. I like, think I got a contact drunk from you, bro. <laughs> Oh man, that's hysterical, bro. Some days, some days you can't you can't make all of them, man. You just really can't. Cheap, Tosh cheap was with the too. bottle service girl. <laughs> Who wants to talk about bottle service girl? <laughs> that that was that's his excuse, Bow. He came home with the bottle service girl. What can you do, man? You and know? now he's all salty about her. They drain your energy. They drain your pocketbook. What else can you do? I'll buy this bottle and I'll come home with you. Mm. Ace of spades. No, you won't. What's happening with the spy, man? Bro, I want this to go up. Give us opportunity. Ah, it's fucking Jerome, man. Fucking Powell. Just keep saying dumb shit. <laughs> I just don't understand how how everybody else in the market is like pumping some shit. Like everybody's like pumping. And Jerome is over here like he's the market regulator. <laughs> he's like, well, you know the coronavirus could really bring us back down to however, however, like, dude, he's more wishy-washy than that dude on Twitter that you can never figure out whether he's long or short. <laughs> like that's Powell. I think I know who you're talking about, bro. I'm like, so Powell, are you short the market or long the market? Because uh, thanks in advance, trying to follow your alert. Yeah. Thanks in advance, buddy. CC my bank account. 
CC Venmo me, man. Yeah. <laughs> I'm Here is you, my I'm QR you. code. That is so fucking funny, man. I'm, I'm like, you. dude, I'm just like, I just can't fucking tell anymore. Like he does some, like listen to this fucking headline. There you go. It does seem very likely that there will be teleworking in the future. Says pandemic is accelerating. Okay. <laughs> Pre-existing trends in the, okay. So there's going to be telemarking, teleworking, teleworking and online shopping. Okay, so let me go buy some Amazon. Nope, market tanks. Oh, you getting some, Val's getting some live trades in. Everybody stop what you're doing. <laughs> right. And then there fucking Val. He's keeping the tradition alive. Oh God, HTZ, nasty. Economy is in the early stages of a bounce back. If the virus remains under control, there should be more positive economic data. But yesterday, he's just like bearish on everything. Some serious questions that need to be answered before the Fed could create central bank digital currency. Oh, fuck's sake. Uh, Trump answers or asks China's Xi in June 2019 meeting to help him win re-election. And the market doesn't like that? (laughs) The fuck? Nice job, Val. Joe, you'll lose your mind trying to figure it out, bro. You'll I lose just, your mind. Just I'm, go line to line, brother. Line to line. I'm dude for real. But it's like what's so confu- what's so what what pisses me off is that, you know, it's like <laughs> you don't want to miss the dip, right? Of course. You don't want to miss the dip. Never want to miss the dip. Then it just never comes back. <laughs> but when you do and you're prepared to take the dip, then all this fucking propaganda starts coming out that the dip is going to fail. New lows are coming. I'm like, just believe oh, it's, in the it's market. It's the biggest game of pug war I've on. ever seen. The market keeps tanking. It's trying to tank organically. And then yeah. they freaking pump it up with all this printing of money, man. It's like, who's paying for all this money? For real. Bro, it's like the same shit with Tesla. Like the shorts still think that they're right. Shorts still think Tesla is a fraud. And it's at fucking a thousand. <laughs> It'll be at two thousand. Bro, it's months. like, it's like, oh yeah, I nailed it. I've been it, so it, right. At what, at what point are our shorts on Twitter gonna say, you know what? I may be wrong about hating on for Tesla. real, dude. People were calling the top on spy for ten years, and <laughs> so ten. and and finally they've been right for two months, and now all of a sudden we think they're the smartest people in the world. Good God, man! I'm just like, okay. It was about say funny Hertz the bank is stock. not currently offering any shares under the ATM program it says sales under ATM program were properly suspending pending further understanding of nature and timing of staff's review. Oh wow, so speculative. <laughs> like, don't think that's bullish. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit. I don't know, but it kind of feel like that's bullish. <laughs> no no offering, offering say no say more, no fam, more. buy it up. <laughs> Let's scoopy, no scoopy, more liquidation. Scoopy. Give me some of that. Oh man! Look, Any more man, questions, guys? Yeah, get back to your questions, guys. Let, let's answer some stuff. If you guys haven't already understood, we're a total fun family here at MIC, man. We have fun like this every single day together, man. Think about it. Think about it. this. Is our whole team, man? These are all our members. This isn't even the main training chat. These are just guys interacting in the webinar. Out of We do this weekly, man. This is how much fun we have, man. If you guys don't want to come in here and learn how to make money and have fun while doing it, then fuck, man. I just don't let ego rule your life, man. I'm telling you, if you lost $197 today trading and you're not part of MIC, brother, what are you doing? You could have got a whole month of networking, education, everything. For real, bro. I'm, I'm telling like, you, man. And, and if you lost 1890, you lost a course that Joe created that will teach you how to trade for the next hundred fucking years. And it's not just the course. The course is not 1890. The course is 997. 1890, folks, gets you an annual subscription. Hey, you get the whole membership. To my too. investing club. You get the entire video library. You get the accelerator to jumpstart your trading and get you going on the right track, and then you start to participate in chat. 
Well, and, and think you about start this, to Joe, work and become a trader. Dude, it's common sense. Think about this. If, think about it. Okay, if you guys were like, lifetime's a little too much for me to commit off the bat. Okay, okay, I uh, understand. Cool. But dude, think about annual. You get 12 months of MIC. You get an MIC archive. You get access to moderators. You get an accelerator course that's seven hours long that's going to teach you how to trade. You're going to get so much more than that. And you're going to be able to be able to apply it every single day with your fellow members. Like, dude, I, I, I just don't understand. <laughs> like, if that's not enough for you, what are you looking for, man? Bro, for real. Yeah, I'm like, just. I don't we know. take traders by the hand and teach you everything we know, how to apply it. There's no secret indicators. It's all here, all ready for you guys to learn and then apply. Just like Faye, just like Vic, just like all of us have done daily, man. <laughs> yeah, my webinars make bow money weekly. I, I'm still waiting on your Venmo. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Basically, Joe, what, you what, get... Joe, what do you think? Do, do, do we get like, uh, maybe, what's a finder's fee? 10%? We'll, we'll settle for 15% of whatever HTZ pays you. 1,000%. 1,000% of that 15%. Oh, I was agreeing with you. Like, 1,000% agree with no, you. No, I know. <laughs> <laughs> I will oh, take a man. 10 time leverage uh, gain 15%. on your position. What say again? This is like shark loans. What was it? What's that, Joe? I said I'll take a 10 times uh, your gain. So if you make 100, I would like uh, 1,000 in return. We're bringing in the arms breakers. Oh, dude, that's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> I got to download that. That's fucking. That's what is so that? Cool. <laughs> that's cool. Can I carry this one of those in my wallet? Guaranteed to help. <laughs> this be minted guaranteed. on that's funny oh that's it's your office of my investing club i love it to be minted on august 17th guys august 17th man i'm not giving anything away but we got some serious stuff coming man that is our second year anniversary i'm telling you, you the peepers. time to come into mic is right now before july 1st to get all the savings, to get all the access. Guys, just text me at 213-458-5997. I'm going to take care of you. Um, in fact, let's do a discount. Let's do a discount. Before you if, get to the discount, I got a question. I'm going to type it out. Okay. Go How ahead, can Joe, you go. hold a winning trade longer? Any advice? My advice to hold your trades longer is adjust your stop loss as the trade begins to work in your favor have a point where you move your stop loss down with the price or up with the price and allow the trade to work without it turning into a loser. Usually when you take out the fear of a winning trade turning into a losing trade, you're able to hold a position much longer. <laughs> yeah, Brian, fall asleep. <laughs> Dude, no. How to hold winners, winners longer? Go into a coma. Well, well, Joe, it's like what I showed. So let, let me say this again, man. When, it, when you're new, it's very hard to hold a winner because fight or flight is telling you that survival is like, dude, the psychology is, is very backwards when it comes to trading of what we do to survive, right? So the, if you're brand new and you're just not used <coughs> to it yet, the number one thing that, that is going to tell you to, um, when you're in profit is to take the money immediately because that tells you you're surviving. That tells you that you're winning. It's all psychology, yep. man. Like seriously, this stuff has been studied for hundreds of years. Here's the thing. You have to train yourself to trust in what you know, your plan, your profit targets. So here's what I said. I made this, no, I made this earlier. If you are a guy who goes to work and you wait for something all day, say you wait for um, this right here. So say you wait for the VWAP crack all day on the backside. Remember what I said, if you got in, say right here on the pop, that's your entry and you set a hard stop, you set a hard stop and walked away. I'm not, I'm not kidding. You walked away, whether you have, you know, fantasy covers in or you don't, whether you know it or you believe it, walking away and letting this trade play out will truly build that muscle of holding a winner. And I think all new traders need to do this with very small size because what this is going to do, I don't care if it's one share, dude, you're going to have the emotions of being, oh my God, I'm going to leave it up to my process and my stops. So I may either put fantasy covers in or I may not, but I am going to stop out if it breaks above this level, walk away in a week you will hold your winners three times longer. Dude, that is what taught me. Agree more. Yeah. That's what taught me, man.
bro, I set a hard stop. I forced myself to walk away. I didn't start with crazy size at all because I was just trying to build the muscle. It is no different than trying to build your muscle in a gym. It is the same thing, man. It's just applied. What muscle do we build in the gym? <laughs> well, I don't train that in the gym. <laughs> <laughs> I do Guys, tongue push-ups. If you can't do a tongue push-up, you're not a man. It, I'm telling you right now, man. Be clear. I, I learned that the hard way. <laughs> so right here, text accelerator discount code to two one three four five eight five nine nine seven. Um, Alex Bow and I are feeling even a little bit more generous today. Text this secret code right here. Oh, this this lets me know all the guys that stood in a two hour webinar are here to the end. We reward you guys. Text accelerator to this number, and uh, I'm going to give you the best discounts we have ever offered on annual or lifetime. So reach out to me, and we'll take care of you today. But back to it. So who has who has any more questions? But that's how to hold a winner, man. That's how to at least get started on not piking everything and being like, oh, okay, maybe I can hold a winner or grow that muscle. So that's what that is. Yeah. Uh, for me, it was when I wanted to hold winners longer <laughs> and I still struggle with it. Like, oh my God, I've been struggling. I struggle with it like the worst. I am the worst. On um, holding winners, Joe? Yeah, on the long side. On the short side, I will just sit back and just hang out. I am <laughs> oh, on totally the fine. Side, on, the on the long side, bro, I just can't. Because on the short side, like, I can visually see where I think it should go, right? Bro, I'm going to tell you right now. On, on the, the long, long side, side, I have no trades, fucking idea. Bro, I have on the no long side idea. Trades, I'm like the two-pump chump. Like, I'm oh, done I'm at, like, at the first bounce. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm long some a couple things right now. One of them is like I'm I'm up pretty nicely on it, and I'm like literally as I'm sitting here right now, I want to sell. But I know based on the pattern that if I sell, uh, this shit's gonna go way fucking further. Should we and confer so, with your tab, Faye? What what? Tell them what to do, Faye. Tell them what to do. <laughs> <laughs> so that's what I was gonna mention. Is that now? Now that I'm holding this and it's super in the money, my stop is break even. Bro, I won't how, let it turn into a loser. And how cool is that, man? How stress-free is that? That was one of yeah. the biggest tricks I ever did, Joe, yep. is when I was in the money pretty good, bro, what's the worst that can happen? Break even or yeah, you break get a even. really Fuck nice it. trade? Right. Yeah. I either have a really nice trade or I make no money. I don't lose any money. I don't gain any money, but I have the opportunity to make an exponentially greater gain. So for me, that break even stop really helps me hold a piece. And also something for those of you that are um, newer or haven't seen any of the videos, use a trailer, a trailing stop, set a trailing stop and use a uh, interval, you know, it'd be, like 50 cents, say you don't want the stock to go against, you don't want it to drop or bounce more than 50 cents. And if that ever happens at any point of you being in your position, then you're going to get out no matter what. So basically if the stock, you get in at four and it goes to 450 and you set a trailing stop at 450, when, it, when the stock is at 450, you set a 50 cent trailing stop. That means that if it immediately drops back to four, you're going to get out. But if it goes from 450 to 460, now your trailing stop is 410. And so it follows the price up and up and up and up and up using that 50 cent difference, locking in your stop along the way. So it kind of forces you to just sit back and wait to see what happens. Oh, how cool is that? Leave it up to the stops, man. Look, yep. one of the number one things I learned a long time ago, and I say this all the time, guys, but when you're new, man, or even if you're not new, play to your strengths, you know, know your weaknesses, but don't inundate yourself in them. Everybody's got weaknesses, man. Everybody's got them, but you got to play to your strengths. One of my weaknesses is being a very emotional trader. You know, me and Bao talk about it all the time. Me, you know, Alex is as steady as a fucking rock, dude. He can <laughs> Okay, that's funny. I just watched this episode like the other day. It's one of my favorite episodes. But seriously, I'm the same. 
<laughs> one, of the, one of the things, one of the things about being a very emotional trader is sometimes you're going to play on those emotions, man. And you're going to just take the money when you shouldn't, or you're going to take, you know, hold on to the loss just because you're too scared. You got to be a little more methodical. So what helped me, man, is hard stops trading, bro. It was time-based yep. trading. So maybe trade only the first hour and then reversal time is a short. And yep. then dude, seriously set a stop. Every single stock I get, I get into now a stop is set. So I overcome those emotions and I take a lot of the stress out, you know, Bao and I are very emotional traders. So he says the same thing. Stops really help him. They help me. If we're wrong, it is okay to be wrong, man. Just protect yourself. You don't have to play that big dick game where you're like, I'm not taking a loss because I'm not no baby back bitch. That's not what this is about, man. Again, you want to have a process to where you can survive today, tomorrow, the next day, the next day after that, and then the next 10 years. You know, Bao's been trading for 20 years, guys, educating and making money. <laughs> I don't know oh what's big. <laughs> oh man. He's funny, the, funny. the key is, man, the key is, is you gotta have a process, guys. And that's the number one thing. <clears throat> so Apple turning red. Markets, <laughs> everything is about fucking everything. Yeah, dude, everything's everything's tanking right now. I'm not I'm not too digging this. Uh Joe, what 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 uh t- what big cap tickers are you looking at right now? Uh, GSX, RCL, LLY. Oh, wow. Wow. Oh, good old Eli Lilly. Jesus. Ah, Lilly. <laughs> Man, after the day Eli Lilly had yesterday, I was, I was really expecting a lot more out of it. Well, you know but It's what? back to its horse shit. Sometimes Dude, I'm just like I'm just get what we want. I'm just over the headlines, bro. It's like it's just it just feels like a bunch of fear mongering to me. That's all it feels like. It I'm just it, there's no longer. It's like coronavirus. We're all gonna die. China's gonna take over the world. Like I'm just I'm past it. I'm well, bro, we're getting we're getting like, to a f- Dude, we're getting to a fucking point, man, where bad news is good news. Like, it's like... In yeah, life, you like, can't, um, we can't even digest it anymore. Dude, like, properly. I swear to God, it's like, it's like if it's mediocre to bad news and not catastrophic news, the market's either going to stabilize or go up. Like, dude, unless Bruce Willis and Armageddon comes and there's an asteroid the size of Texas coming for Earth, it's like, eh. Bro, at this point, I think the best... <laughs> Sorry, not best. I think the worst catalyst the market could have right now is if Chuck Norris dies from COVID. <laughs> A snake bites him and he actually if gets Chuck sick. If Chuck Norris can't defeat COVID, what, what are we hoping for? Dude, I, I'm telling you, man, it's crazy out there when there's so much bad news that even just mediocre news seems like good news in the price action. It's, it's insane. Dude, I I just uh, I'm just uh, yeah. Fine. Okay, that's funny. How does Bao come up with this shit, man? Bao's the quickest responder I've ever seen for jokes in my entire life. He's a walking meme, dude. I'm telling you, how does he do it? This is how he can trade so fast. Bao is the quickest guy on the planet. He is pretty fast, man. God, man. He's pretty Me fast. and Alex He's are always like, dude. Your talents. You have so Am many. Am I watching talents. Spot? Whoa, Spotify. Holy oh, mother. Look at that volume. Whoa. The end there. Man. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> the virus is now in quarantine for the next two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I knew he was going to say this too. Oh, shit. Uh, Spotify looks cool. Does anybody have any really questions, in guys, it. before we wrap this up? Volume kind of sucks. Who's even... got some questions, guys? Oh. Two million shares. Yeah. Alex comes in with the fat. You owe any minus drop. 60%. Wow. Jesus. There you Look go. At this. Since we've been talking, Joe, when did I draw that line? Like two minutes ago? <laughs> yeah, it's... Jesus. Oof. Hey, Alex, did you pike now, buddy? <laughs> No, I'm kidding, dude. You killed it, but holy shit, man. <laughs> Bro, it's, you know, we say Alex we suck, but in, in, like I suck. Get out of here. Dude, in reality, in reality, that pop at 1030 from fucking 15 to 18, dude, literally every short in their mind would have been like, motherfucker, I knew I should have covered. Sorry for yep. very, very colorful language, but 
that sh- that is going to be everyone's mentality in that candle. It was like, the only thing I left on the table was a sandwich. But did <laughs> oh, you forget so to eat quick, the sandwich dude. though, Bao? <laughs> that was the quickest. <laughs> Holy shit. Only thing Alex left on the table today was a fucking salad. <laughs> <laughs> and a green juice. No salad ever. <laughs> Reg show salad. I'm worried, dude. I'm worried, man. Every time I get a text from Alex and it's food, it's either chocolate cake, it's steak, it's fries, or it's goddamn bunch of crunch. And I'm like, bro, I'm mashed potatoes, too, bro. And I'm putting dude, those Capital Grill table. mashed potatoes. Oh, fucking hell. Alex, oh. is, Alex is like, I ate my veggies today. I had I had fries with ketchup. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I had my tomatoes. Uh, He photoshopped. Yeah, the only Photoshop in Alex's pictures is salad. He sends them to his parents. (laughs) I'm eating my greens, mom. Oh, shit. Alex, we're getting getting you on a rabbit food regimen, brother. I thought you tried. I, well, well, I had one day in New Jersey, man. I you had, had one day. day to get – that's all he gave you was He only one gave day. me 20 minutes, man. He gave you 20 minutes to hook him on salad. Fuck. Guys, we're going to wrap this up. We're having too much fun. But uh, text me at 213-458-5997. Text me accelerator secret code. I'll know you watch this webinar. Uh, we're going to take care of you guys right now. Annual and lifetimes, we have promotions going on. Um, and we're going to take care of you guys, man. I'm telling you, record low for lifetime right now. Record low. I cannot lows. warn this enough. Buy the dip. <laughs> Buy there the will dip. be a V-shaped recovery. <laughs> A I, I can guarantee you that there will be a v-shaped recovery. oh there's a v-shaped recovery in our near future yes guys this was so much fun man I, I love these webinars every single week if you guys can't see how much fun we already have you know every single day this is every single wednesday this is every single day in mic this is every single 10 minutes in after hours man just you know just try us out man just try us out if you lost 197 today you lost out on a chance to really see what we're all about man i'm telling you just if you're on the fence, reach out to me and, and, uh, and we'll talk and I'll get you in. No, annual dude, to so lifetime cool. gets cool a deal too. Uh, if you're currently annual and you want to upgrade to lifetime, just text Tosh. I'm sure there's something that we can do. Yeah, there's something we can do for uh, upgrades as well, guys. So if you just joined annual like a week ago, I will figure something out for you. Obviously, case to case. Uh, if you joined 10 months ago annual versus a guy that joined two days ago, there is a difference. Just just text me and we'll figure it out. But uh, guys, you've been awesome. We'll do this again next Wednesday. You know our content structure now. Uh, hopefully, you know the ins and outs of our system, our platform. Um, you know how Alex eats every single day, how Joe does his thing. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we actually are printing money now. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. That's Tosh awesome. needs a bottle. He needs a bottle service. Oh God. Don't even get me started. That's like Forex signals for me. <laughs> Bro, dude, that was what I said earlier. I was like, Tosh is more passionate about bottle service girls than he has Furus. <laughs> yeah. Dude, don't <laughs> get me like, started. Just anybody like, that's scammed. Fu-ru. Who cares? I don't Just care. All but scammers, bottle man. service, them bitches. Dude, those are the true Furus, man. Let me tell you. <laughs> those are the true Furus. <laughs> Dang, dude, I never want to leave this webinar. We have too much damn fun, man. Bro, it's, it, we just need to make it a podcast. I, and instead you. of doing this, instead of doing, you know, we do this, but then, but then, you know, we just switch to a podcast. Well, we bro, you've here. got the Howard Stern voice. I mean, hell. <laughs> we got to get you one of these mics, too. God dang, man. Dude, it was actually pretty cheap, too. It was only a 139 plus tax. I think I, mean, I have one actually in storage. I'll have to bust it out now. Yeah, you fucking might, yeah. Getting me all, get, giving me microphone FOMO. I'm telling you, bro. <laughs> all right, Joe. Bring on them sexy. Joe, remember to pay yourself cords. on those longs, brother. <laughs> oh, fucking. All right, see you guys. This was fun, man. See you guys. All right, man. Have a good one. <laughs> Throwback to looking for Oasis. Oh, it's that chick. Bottle service girl trainer. Oh, God, I'll end it here. <laughs>